welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and the movie I'm reviewing today is called The Santa Box. Now, if you've never been to my channel, first of all, subscribe, like, ring that little bell and it'll notify you every time I upload a new movie review, which is almost every day because so many movies are going to streaming and to theaters all at the same time. Love it. I love that we have so many choices. So my goal is to help you know what the content is in a movie so you can decide if it's right for you and your family. I hate wasting time and money on bad movies, both in filmmaking quality and in inappropriate content. So with that being said, let me tell you about this movie. First of all, it is opening in theaters, mostly in Utah on November 6th, and then it will be available for streaming soon after. The rating is PG. It's one hour and 41 minutes. And the movie review mom grade I'm giving it is a B. And let me tell you why. In a nutshell, XL Entertainment and Covenant Communications present a very lovely Christmas film that shares a sugary sweet story that illustrates a lesson in kindness. And don't take my description of sugary sweet to mean that it's not good. I think this world absolutely needs more sugary sweetness, don't you think? Especially lately. The family-friendly dramedy was written, directed, and produced by Spanky Dustin Ward. He had been thinking about the idea for this story for about a couple of years and then finally began shooting just this last August of 2020 during COVID. So here are some pictures of the cast wearing their masks and they were very careful to be socially distant in order to get this movie out in time for Christmas. The director explained, quote, filming during this crazy time brought some unique challenges, but we acclimated to it very quickly. Everyone on the production team strictly adhered to safe production guidelines implemented by the health officers we had on set. Thanks to those practices, everyone in the cast and crew stayed healthy and the production went off without a hitch. So kudos to this whole team that was able to produce a really sweet movie all during COVID. So big thumbs up for that. The story is about a teenage girl who feels like her family is cursed by Christmas. All these terrible things have happened to her during the month of December. After losing her father, her home, and other things, she and her mom move into a new home in that they're renting because they can't afford much um, in a new area. And so they don't have hardly any money at all or possessions until mysteriously a Santa box appears suddenly on their front stoop. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Now, let me give you some quick tips for parents because it is a family friendly movie. There is no profanity. Yay. I always appreciate that. There are many important lessons, both for adults and kids to learn. And I'll share a few of them with you here in just a few minutes. Some German is spoken with subtitles that would either have to be read by a child or have the subtitle read to them. And because of those German subtitles, the scenes are about World War II. So you might need to explain to your kids the whole deal between Germans and Jews during World War II. There's also talk of death and scenes in a hospital. And then finally, talk to your kids about how you can bring love to others during this Christmas season. You might even be inspired to create your own Santa box. I think that's such a wonderful tradition. Now, some themes that are worth talking about with your family after you watch the movie are, first of all, the idea that life is not fair. I know sometimes we always yell that to the universe, it's not fair, but there was no rule that said it was supposed to be fair. And I think the sooner people realize that, that they can Look at challenges as opportunities for growth rather than they're owed something by the universe. Anyway, it's an interesting concept, definitely worth talking about. Other concepts or themes are kindness and having an open heart, bullying, friendship, ego and focus on self versus service to others, labels and kind of the labels that we 
put on other people, keeping promises. And then here are just a few lines that kind of summarize some of the major themes of the movie. This first one is actually from the closing song, which I thought was really beautiful. It's called The Gift of Christmas and was written by Scott Barrier, Donna DeSopo, and Chantel Ogden. And the theme is love is the gift of Christmas. Another line spoken by Rachel Watts, played by Tatum Langdon, says we can't control when bad things happen, but we can control when good things do. And I like that because, as I mentioned, life isn't fair. Crazy stuff happens. I mean, COVID, stuff like that, among other things. And we have no power over viruses and pandemics and all that kind of stuff. But we can choose to create good in this world. And that's the lesson that she was getting at. Another line also spoken by her is, that's the gift Christmas gives everyone, the chance to change the world for someone that needs a little help. And there are a lot of people around the world that need some help right now. And then another line is by Otto, a, a character played by Sean Stevens. And he says, the bad times helped us appreciate the good times. Absolutely, that's true. And then the last one I'll share with you right now is one also by Otto who says, what am I meant to learn from all of this? In other words, when these bad experiences happen, look on the bright side, look at the lessons that can be learned, and look at how you could be a stronger, better person once you get through it. All right, now let me talk about some things that I really liked about the movie. First of all, newcomer Cammie Carver is super cute and does a really good job as Callie. She has a really good future in acting if that's what she wants to do. The director stated about Callie, quote, for the role of Callie, we auditioned dozens of young actresses and Cammie originally auditioned for a different role, but she absolutely knocked our socks off. We instantly knew she was our Callie, end quote. Most of the 20 plus cast members were actually homegrown in Utah where the movie was filmed in Bountiful, West Jordan, and Harriman, Utah. And surprisingly, some of the shots were actually filmed in Rustov, Georgia in Sakartvelo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, Sean Stevens, a favorite local actor, showed his acting chops as Otto and said, quote, the Otto character is an 85-year-old German immigrant. And naturally, Spanky, the director, originally wanted to cast an actor who was around that age. But luckily for me, with the help of an amazing makeup artist, Vinay Morris, I was able to convince Spanky that I could pull off a great performance of an old German man. And the character was an absolute joy to play. He really does do a great job. And in fact, I didn't recognize him when I first saw Otto on the screen. It looked like a legit old guy. So the, kudos to the makeup artist and of course to him. Otto is kind of like an, a Yoda character, constantly sharing words of profound wisdom. And in fact, I always write down the inspirational lines that I hear when I'm watching a movie so I can share them with you. But I finally, I just stopped writing them down because there were so so many. <laughs> there are a couple of mysteries that unfold during the story, which I love a good twist or another layer to a story. So that's fun. And I love it when directors actually put themselves in movies. So Spanky Dustin Ward actually plays the doctor that you see towards the end of the movie. Even those who don't celebrate Christmas can absolutely enjoy the lessons and the message of this movie. Otto, for example, is Jewish, yet he recognizes that Christmas is a wonderful, magical time of year. And so I think it's universal in that regard. You'll end the movie feeling good and wanting to do more to help others around you, especially during this upcoming Christmas season. Now, there were a few things that I didn't like so much. First is that some of the actors just smile way too much as if they're super excited to be in a real movie. Well, even still, some of the extras did a really good job, especially considering that many of them were young and probably had no acting training. There were definitely some overacting moments though, which made some of the characters feel more like exaggerated cartoon characters than real people. There's one scene where the sound quality is noticeably bad. 
Now, reading the press release about this movie, I saw that they filmed the movie very quickly. And so I'm assuming the audio just must have been messed up for some reason in that space. It's a scene where the mother and daughter are talking in the bedroom. And so I don't know if that had to do with the sound quality. But anyway, it was just sort of noticeable. Luckily, the scene was short. And then the rest of the sound quality was fine in the rest of the movie. There is some stiff dialogue at times. I really like it when directors pay really close attention to details. And there were some really good details, but there were also some that just kind of missed the mark. For example, Callie is supposed to be really poor, and yet she has this beautiful nail polish that looks like it was a gel manicure, which of course no one would be able to afford if you didn't have any money. So that just seemed off. There were a couple of actresses that wore the exact same necklace as if you know, the costume department only had so many necklaces available or something like that. Uh, some of the props are actually in different places in various scenes uh, that shouldn't have been moved that I caught. Nothing big, but just made me go, huh. And all movies actually have these problems. So it's not a huge statement on why this movie is terrible, because it's not. There is, however, so much lip gloss in this movie. <laughs> One of the actresses kept squeezing her, pursing her lips together, you know, like that, um, which was a little bit distracting, but it can easily be avoided with more practice acting as she grows older and becomes a really great actress. Some people might complain that the musical score is super cheesy, like the kind that you hear in Hallmark movies or the Lifetime channel. So I actually spoke with the composer, Russ Whitelock, and he explained, quote, I felt the score to be very melodic and heartwarming, which is what a Christmas movie should be. I'm sure if you felt some level of emotion watching this movie, the music played a part in bringing feelings and human lessons of the story to life, end quote. And he definitely did something that I could never do. It's easy for me to criticize all of this stuff, but I've never made a movie and I recognize that. Again, I'm just trying to give you content so you kind of know what to expect in terms of what's appropriate and the quality and that kind of stuff. I definitely appreciate his talents and his contribution to the movie. And the movie definitely brings the feels. Okay, now I mentioned that I write down a bunch of lines that I find especially inspiring and insightful. I shared a few of them with you already. If you want to see a bunch more, and they're good ones, run over to my website, which is called moviereviewmom.com, and you can see them all written out there. And then finally, before I go, I wanted to give you a recommendation for another movie that I think is pretty similar. And actually, it won some attention and awards at a film festival. Uh, it's called Finding Grace. It's also about a teenage girl that has a little bit of a shift in attitude with some lessons learned and good feelings in the end and that kind of stuff. Well, I don't want to give everything away. Anyway, I recommend that. Be sure and click down below in the link. And if you rent or purchase that video. It helps to support my little channel. And I truly appreciate that. All right. That's it for me. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, bye for now.